Welcome to the Swim Swim Breakdown. As always, I'm Coleman Hodges coming to you from Brooklyn, New York. We are joined by Swim Swim Editor-in-Chief Braden Keith from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and our senior international reporter Loretta Race from French 75 Boutique in Kentucky. What's up, y'all? Braden, tell us about your cup. Oh, did you notice? <laughs> My cup says F12 on it. I, I hope you can see that. Swim uh, nerds, what does F12 mean? For swim nerds, the nerdiest of nerds know that that's the button that you push to send uh, live high-tech results to the internet, which everybody forgets to do at the end of every session. So my good friend, Aaron Coy, who runs all the big meets in Arizona, sent me a cup so that I could use it on the podcast so that nobody would ever forget again to hit F12. So thanks, Aaron. You think you're a swim nerd? Think again. <laughs> next level swim. <laughs> All right. And, and so let's just nerd right into it. Uh, we are starting with <laughs> not a very fun topic, but um, the war in Ukraine via Russia is still going on. Um, that has, that has bled into the swimming community. Um, we talked to Andre Govorov just a few days ago. He called for all Russian athletes to be banned from competition for no competitions to take place in Russia. And we, we got some comments on it both ways. There was some discussion in the comments on that one for sure. More recently today, the IOC has said they are, Brain, correct me if I'm wrong, recommending that all Russian athletes be banned from competition moving forward, essentially, um, until the situation changes. Can you enlighten us a little more on that one? Yeah, so this is just a recommendation for now, but it's from the executive board, so it's a strong recommendation. Um, and there, I think there's been interesting points made on both sides. You know, the Russian athletes have fairly said, we didn't invade Ukraine. I, I was not in Kiev last night. Um, why should I be punished for this? And I think that's a fair point. Um, but Andre's point is also fair. It's not the Ukrainian swimmers' fault that Russia invaded. However, they're unable to train. Um, so there's, you know, it's, it's, I can see both sides of it. To me, ultimately, where the conversation comes down to is we all have to acknowledge that the Olympics are about nationalism. Without nationalism, governments don't continue to fund the athletes. They don't bid for these meets and, and Paralympics and Olympics, which are often money losers. They do all of this to promote their national brand. And if you can't remove these athletes from these events, then then. Vladimir Putin continues to benefit from it. Um, and that's the problem. And, and I feel bad for the athletes who have worked hard and who did not make the decision to invade Ukraine, even though we have seen a few of them support that decision, um, which to me is a different matter. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, they have to understand that as Russian Olympians, they are part of this marketing effort. Um, and, if they have to take the hit by missing meets until Vladimir Putin stops what he's doing, then it is what it is. It's unfortunate, but everything about this is unpleasant. You know, there's no, there's no happy ending to this for anybody. Um, and so to me, if, if that means they miss out on the Paralympics and so be it. it is what it is. Well, and they're not the only ones missing out. I mean, we already saw FINA cancel essentially the world junior championships or at least pull it from, Russia. And then Australia recently just pulled its official team, whatever that might, might have been from the world short course championship. So, you know, okay, obviously Russia, you know, retrained those athletes are specifically affected, but I think other national federations are kind of also just inserting themselves into the political argument by withdrawing from yeah. those particular competitions. And to me, moving the meets was a no-brainer, right? Like mm. it, that's just a pure safety thing. I don't think right. the athletes would feel safe going to Russia right now. Mm -hmm. um, so to me, that's a no-brainer. And anybody who disputes that has just has a different perspective on the world. And that's it, nothing I can do about that. The athletes, I think there's a a continuing conversation to be had. Um, I don't know if sports are enough. The World Cup is a really big deal. Uh, you know, Russia and Belarus were just banned from the World Cup. That's a huge deal. That's, that's in sports, that's the biggest thing you can do to a European nation. So maybe that will be enough to at least 
pile on, right? Like the, the economic sanctions, all these other things that you can read about on CNN or Fox News or wherever you get your news from. Um, that's all is maybe it just piles onto that. And at some point, the straw breaks the camel's back and we get some resolution to this. But I don't know. It's, it's never <laughs> easy, right? International politics are never are right. always complicated and, and we shouldn't expect it to be any different when it bleeds over into sport. Yeah. I mean, it just, it, it, it's sports. And I think that's one thing we all kind of have to remember. It's like people are dying and, and that's bigger than sports. Right. Um, and so anything that can put a stop to that, to get Putin's attention, to, to stop the dying, um, I feel like it's worth it. Um, no matter what, what that cost is, but let's move on. Uh, Obviously, we had another huge conference weekend um, with a lot of NCAA highlights. Let's start with men's Big Tens. Um, I was shocked that Brendan Burns pulled the two-fly, two-back double. I mean, he's he's proven that he can, but we've never seen someone actually do that in the same day, swim four 200s in one day. And he was like, I think he won all four. Who's done that before? Uh, the so Ryan Lochte hasn't done that. Has done it. Sorry, has Ryan Lochte done it. I don't think Ryan Lochte ever had to. No, who's the, who's the Crippen that swam at Florida? Teresa, she did it at NCAAs like every year. She didn't win them though. No, she didn't win them. <laughs> Winning them is a different story. We kind of looked and our readers looked, nobody could really find anybody that had won both at this level. To me, it's just, right. to me, that was one of the biggest standouts of Big Tens. He got Big Ten swimmer of the meet for the second year in a row. Anything else stand out to you guys from men's Big Tens? Well, I want to keep talking about him. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> um, well, the question you wrote on my note sheet is, will he do the double at NCAAs? And I think he absolutely will do the double because he went 139 in both. Like, that's, that's a good time. Could he go... 138 and one or the other without the, other, you know, without the double maybe, but like, I think if you're in a, and you can get 139s in the same session for Brendan Burns, you're taking that all day long at NCAAs. So I, I mean, I, I get that he just did it. Like he, it'll be the same format at NCAAs mostly. Um, but I don't know. That just seems risky to me. I mean, yeah, it's but I think such Indiana, a heavy load for the Indiana, last day of a meet. Indiana is in a position to finish very high at NCAAs. I, you know, this is a golden year for them with the fifth years, with a very good group of freshmen. Um, I think Indiana is viewing, if I'm Ray Luz, I'm talking to Brendan and I'm saying, look, this is the most points we're going to score. This double is the most points we're going to score. Uh, do this for me this year and next year I'll let you pick one and go after the fastest time you That's can like go a after. lot of pressure on one guy that's like like okay our title rests on you <laughs> college swimming is pressure I mean well they're not gonna win so it's not that much pressure but like you know college sports is about pressure if there's no pressure there's no fun right okay. I don't want to I don't want to watch everybody just swimming for funsies <laughs> um also coming out of that, Ohio State men looked solid, uh, led by Olympian Hunter Armstrong. It seems like he's really carrying the momentum from Tokyo. Do you think he can challenge for NCAA titles? Uh, who's he swimming in the hundred back? I mean, I don't think he's got it in the sprints. I don't. I think there's too much ahead of him in the sprints. He's well, I mean, fourth. He's fourth in the hundred free right now, just in the NCAA rankings. Yeah, but I don't. So, think he can beat, I don't think he can beat the Texas guys. He was forty-one-five, and yeah, ah, it's like it's gonna yeah. take. It's gonna take. I mean, uh, yeah, Brooks has already been forty ninety-nine. You know, like I I'm think just, it's gonna I'm take never, forty. I'm never counting out an Olympian. I think somebody who has handled that pressure, who has performed and has shined, I just feel like has that extra like confidence behind him. So I think he's a wild card for that. So you think he's got a better chance in the hundred free than the hundred back? That he's no, I think the hundred back. No, I'm just throwing it out there. That's a possible, you know, combination of events. So no, the hundred back, I think is his bread and butter. I think that's where he's going to, you know, he didn't even the win best. the hundred back at big tens. Okay. <laughs> who, else, who else is in that hundred back? Brendan Burns, obviously who beat him. The cow guys. Like a 10th or Cal something, guys. right? Wasn't it like a 10th? I mean, 
It was a few tents, I think. Yeah, I like he didn't like smash him, you know. <laughs> no, he didn't, but he he won handily. Um, yeah. So you got Brendan Burns, you got the Cal guys. Texas has someone. Oh, oh we we forgot about Hunter's relay laid off though. He was forty four five, right? Forty four three. He was forty four three on something. Well, that was it. His individual is forty four three six. And so, so he's number two. No, his, re, his relay right was 44-3-6. Okay. His relay leadoff was 44-3-6. Yeah. 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 I mean, mm. it's not a great backstroke field. I think I think Adam <laughs> Cheney is is still who I would call oh, my favorite. Right. Nah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a yeah, there's a lot of it's a it's a deep one. So NCAA rankings are Burns, Armstrong, Orlando, Stokowski from NC State are all 43, 44-3s. Adam Cheney is 44-5. Nobody else is under 45 seconds. So it's not a it's not a great field compared to some of the other insane fields that we're going to see at NCAA. So that gives yeah. him a shot. Do you, do you think Orlando swims it at NCs? Mm. No. <laughs> he answered his own question. <laughs> He's going to I am Hunter Fly to Fly. Yeah, yeah, that's probably right. So I mean, because I, I think he went that time leading off their medley relay anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it'd be fun if he did. I yeah. guess <laughs> the worst uh, race of the NCAA championships, men's hundred back. Um, let's move on to Big Twelves. Um, before we get to NCAA prospects, was there any any swims at Big Twelves that you raised your eyebrows at all? I don't know what happened at Big Twelve. Not really. I don't remember anything. I, the whole sophomore class of Texas is pretty strong. I'm I'm super excited about them actually. And the German, um, Anna Alent. Yeah. Yes. That's so I mean that's that, she's yeah. got to be the highlight, right? Yeah. Yeah. Olivia Bray. That's titles. another one. Olivia Bray did well. Olivia looks so, really yeah. solid. Yeah. Anna. Anna. Yeah. I'm I'm curious to see if Anna's gonna challenge for breaststroke titles because she has just been getting better and better all season. Mm-hmm. I still can't figure out how good the Texas women are. You know, and that's the question. Yeah, <laughs> they're still getting, you know, they've got these pieces like Anna Lent should be a top of the pile name. We should be talking about her all the time now. Olivia Bray is an NCAA champion. Is she? No, she's, she's, she's number, she's champion. ranked number one in the 200 fly. Okay. Emma Stickland. Mm. Emma Stickland, who I coached <laughs> until she was 10 years old. Are you Thank kidding? You. Nice. Oh, that's amazing. So You're you welcome. had a hand in her success. I left her yeah. off a relay once because our 910 oh. girls were that stacked. So now she's like, yeah, she's trying to make up for it. <laughs> um, so, I mean, yeah, you know, it's they've got some good pieces. They don't have... They don't yeah. have the piece that even like NC State has or Alabama mm-hmm. has. Um, they don't have that swimmer that you're like, well, this swimmer's got to win an NCAA title, right? They're going to win one. Um, <clears throat> well, I don't know. That makes me want to put them maybe fourth or fifth somewhere around Alabama. But I think I, I still just have this feeling that they're better than that. Like, I feel like they're better than well, we I think f- they are. And, that, and that's because they have the piece that's diving. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, true. Yep. Right? Okay. I mean, like they were third last year to Virginia and NC State. Good point. Good and point. it's, you know, it's like we forget it every time, yes. but it's like they've got that and no one else does. Yeah. Um, it'll be interesting. So uh, so before we get too deep into women's NCAA talks, women's Pac 12s, um, let's let's cover that real quick. Um, do you think the Stanford women look better than we expected or worse than we expected coming out of conference meet? Because it's kind of what we expected, right? Tori and Reagan just lit it up and everyone else did like decent. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, Tori and Reagan did great. So that's, that's a good sign, right? Like that from, (laughs) Whether you're a Stanford fan or not, if you are a USA swimming fan, you want Tori and Reagan to be doing great because that means Charlotte and Claire are going to do great and so on and so forth. You know, this the, the Olympic road continues to run through Stanford. Uh, <laughs> Virginia gets better. NC, all these Big other time. teams get better. The Olympic path still goes through Stanford. For, so from a USA swimming perspective, that Tori and Reagan swam fast is great. 
Um, again, though, like Stanford needed some help to close the gap on Virginia because Virginia was so good at ACC's and they were so good at NCAA's last year. And Stanford needed help to get there. They needed somebody to pop up and, and close that gap, but I just don't see it. You know, they can't even fill out five full force relays. They've got to sacrifice a relay at NCAA's and it's hard, it's hard to beat a team like Virginia if you've got to punt on a relay. So, so yeah, I'm curious as to Virginia, NC State, Stanford, Texas, women. Do you think Texas can repeat their third place? I do. From last I'm, year? I'm, I'm more curious if somebody can catch Stanford. Ooh, I want to run, I want to run the numbers on it. Ooh. But like, like who, who's your front runner for that? NC state looks so good at ACC's. Um, I think they're deeper than we think they are. I think Texas with the diving, I just, I don't, I don't see a clear separation between Stanford and NC state right now. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's, I think Stanford is a better team, but I, it's not a clear gap. Yeah. Like I'm really curious as to how, I mean, we saw it last year. NC State obviously is a great NCAA team. Like Braden knows what he's doing, Braden Holloway. But thanks, Cole. <laughs> well, you're not the head coach of NC State, but like, I, are, are you? How 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 much are they going to? How much of a conference team are they this year versus Stanford? Right, and then like Texas doesn't have the depth that either of those teams do, but they have the diving. So it's yeah. like, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Tori and Tori and Reagan still are in tough events, right? Like they still, they, they aren't just going to walk to NCAA titles. They've still they got to show up. Yeah. They could conceivably not win a single NCAA title between mm -hmm. the two because yeah. they're going up against other Olympians. Right. Yeah, like that's the scary prospect. Yeah. Yeah. Alex Walsh in the 200 fly yes. disrupts things. Right. If they put Kate Douglas in the hundred fly, you know, that mm. would be such a big dog move for, for Virginia to put Kate Douglas in the hundred fly, just to try to disrupt Stanford, just to kind of mess with them a little bit. Yeah. Well, I mean, you still got Maggie, right. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, and I mean, even in the two back, if yeah. Reagan swims that you've got Ryan white yeah. <laughs> who, who made the, and Phoebe bacon, the two yeah. who made the team, you know, it's right. just, Every every Could which away. I'm so excited for this meet. I'm not going to women's. I'm going to men's, but I am excited for women's. Women's is going to be good. Moving on from college swimming, uh, we saw a kind of neat international event this weekend in the Copa Heller. I guess invite international. I don't I don't know the official name for it, but Le International Copa. Heller. Not lay. Yeah. Not international. <laughs> Sorry, I and, was I was just talking to Anne Lepizan about French things, so I had French okay. in my head. And uh, uh, international in in Querétaro, Mexico. <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, we saw some big names: Michael Andrew, Katinka Hozu, Dylan Carter, Sydney Pickram, Arno Kaminga, among others. Uh, Jay Letherland, Chase Kalish. Um, we heard they got some fat appearance fees, which is great for the athletes. Um, they took a lot of pictures, signed a lot of autographs. What'd you guys think about the swimming? For me, it was par for the course for altitude. Um, so it's, it's nearly 6,000 feet above sea level. So I did, I did talk to Arno this morning and he had said, yeah, it was like pretty freaking difficult, but you know, <laughs> I got through it. Um, and in a hundred, huh? in a hundred. Yeah! <laughs> but the equipment okay the equipment was kind of shoddy by all accounts it was like literally like roped like time pads like hooked onto the gutters like it wasn't like official equipment kind of thing and then like the blocks were old and blah 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 so we weren't expecting humongous times and that was reflective I mean we saw Hosu do I think a 456 400 IM which by the way can I tell you that Chase did not swim the 400 IM right. so at least Katinka swam it yeah. okay Chase did the 200 IM. Year, so. yeah. Chase did the 200 IM. I think it was two double O. Mm -hmm. Litherland, I think, was 203. Mm -hmm. And Michael Andrew did do a, a tough treble on the second to last night. 
me double mm-hmm. check. He did 50 breasts, 100 fly, 100 free. And not bad. I think his top time mm, is debatable. He's 53 in the 100 fly, right? Mm-hmm. So solid. Was he 101, double O in the 100 breast? Mm, I don't know about the 100 breast. On that night, he was 27, 19 in the 50. And then 53, 9. Yeah, 53, 2 in the one fly. And then 51, 8. It's good to see him racing a lot again. I think yeah. that's his sweet spot and he needs to totally. get back to that. I feel I like I feel like that's the best meet he's had since you know since coming back. Yeah. Um he looks pretty I solid. I want to see him get all 48 in the hundred free. We all do. I saw you debate, I saw you debating, Braden, the, the readers, because a lot of people are like, nah. You zero know? percent <laughs> chance he goes a 48. That's he can never go a 48. There's not a zero percent chance that a 22 year old who goes 49 4 yeah. will go 48 9. Especially when like the problem is the technique right like yeah. you could just change that and then he, like it's not like he doesn't have the <sighs> skill or the body type because yeah. what's the math on it what's the the physiology is like until if you have 47 seconds of anaerobic work and then you need the aerobic part so like he's not collapsing in the last stroke <laughs> of his hundred free. <laughs> Um, you know, the training isn't the problem, the hundred free, he can swim a 50 point in the hundred fly. So like he can obviously finish a hundred. Um, I'd love to see them do a camp. Who's the best technical coach? You know, is it Dave Durden? I'd love to see them do a a technical camp with somebody to work that out. And I know part of the USRPT ideal is they've got certain techniques that they believe in, you know, the real flat breaststroke. Um, but I, I just love to see him maybe with Russell Mark. Now that Russell Mark is a free agent, maybe they can go, you gotta go a a week in a, in a tank with Russell Mark and, and do all the data and the videos or Glenn Mills or somebody and just clean that up. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, he, he could go to Australia. He's a Commonwealth. Heck yeah. Uh, Second generation Commonwealth. I know. I want uh who's who's Titmus's coach? Boxel. Boxel. That's yes! it. <laughs> yeah! Michael Andrew meets Dean Boxel. Yeah. Let's <laughs> let's see. What a hell of a vlog. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Totally. <laughs> uh, so so that was a that was a cool meet. And we've got our own cool meet coming up here this week in Chicago, of all places. Uh that's my city. With is it really Chicago or is Rosemont it, it, it Pro- Westmont? Is that what it is? Westmont, Westmont. yeah. Sorry, I keep saying Rosemont. That's terrible Westmont. branding, though. They should call it Pro Swim Series Chicago. They should. I would. I don't. I, I don't no understand. Idea it was near there. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Westmont Pro Swim. Who are you guys most excited for? Because this field is small, but it is stacked. I want to see Lily King. Yes. I feel like she's been quiet. You know, yes. she didn't have a great Olympics. I want to see how she bounces back. I'm looking for Lily. She had yep. pretty good ISL, right? Yeah. But the yeah. ISL is kind of its own animal kind of thing. I don't know. Yeah, but I you know who else like... is an animal? Lily King. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm excited for her versus Lydia on the rematch. I, I think True. that's a fun, a fun story. True. I'm excited to see Lydia yeah. for that matter. Yeah. Because oh, Lydia yeah. has been racing yards because she lives in Alaska and there's not, she, she the yards Cup. is not her she strength. She did some of the World Cup. She did some of the short course meters World Cup. And yeah. it's yeah, like, fine. I want to see, I want to see right. Lily and Lydia in long course. Loretta. Lily Lydia in long course. I'm, I want to see Claire Kurz. I want to see Claire Curzon and Kelsey Dahlia. That's what I want to see. Head to Under fly. <laughs> yes, oh. I do. Because oh. I feel like Kelsey is like, on the bubble like is she gonna come back is she not you know what i mean like she did well in short course meters and isl is that yeah. like resurgence the follow-up of the world record that's a good one yeah, yeah. a good one i want to see ryan murphy and shane casas Ooh, 100 back one. there's so many Ooh. good ones <laughs> it's gonna be awesome we get to see how shane's <laughs> texas training is going and to see where murph's at Prelims is only going to be 45 minutes long. Dude, it's that's, great the, meat. Yeah. that's the best part. It is. <laughs> oh my is God, just, it is. Yeah. If, if you're doing a double, <laughs> that's rough. Yeah. Sorry for you. <laughs> I mean, that's our swimming news for the week. It was college conference. It was, it was Ukraine. And now it's time for sink or swim. 
First up today on Sink or Swim, Matt Sates swims a 341, 400 IM, just for fun. Just because why not? Because he's Matt Sates. Not just for fun, Coleman. That is a <laughs> misdescription of why he did it. He needed the B cuts, so he, he would just, have the option. He thought that it was a walk in the park, and so he decided to do it. This is not that's, real reporting. That's his idea of fun. He told me himself. Um, I'm not going to ask you to predict <laughs> what he will swim at NCAAs. I'm just going to ask you to predict if he will win an NCAA title this year. Sink. I, I would have said swim before he got to Georgia after seeing him. He's been very good for a freshman. Um, he's been great for a freshman. You look like a cartoon character. You look like you belong in a Mario Brothers video game. Um, I, I, I just think he, I think he's very good. I just don't think he's been there long enough to adapt. And I think he's got too much competition. Jake McGay did it as a freshman last year. Okay, I'm. Yeah, but can, Karen I, Smith can I say is something? Swim a Jake, season Jake, best. No, Jake, Jake I'm going to swim it myself. this year. Jake McGay, I'm swimming it. I'm swimming it. I'm swimming it. Two hundred free. Matt Sates, NCAA champion. Boom. So he's going to go one twenty nine in the two hundred free. You're calling it? Yeah, I'm doing it. So, so you're okay with one twenty nines in the two hundred free, but you're not okay no, with me I don't calling one forty fours. No, I don't think. I don't think it's, it's totally no, different. I don't. I don't think it's going to take a one twenty nine. I, I don't. I think it's going to be like a one thirty low. Okay. Oh, I think that's a bust. If it's one thirty low, men's NCAA's is the worst meet that's ever happened. <laughs> I'm, that, turning, that might be I'm true. turning it off. I'm, we're going to stop that, covering men's NCAAs. Okay. That's <laughs> Turn the dial. But, Kira, no, but I, Matt Kieran Sates, Smith, I am subtweeting you. Dean is, Ferris, <laughs> I am subtweeting you. This is the best sink or swim ever. Dean's not no, going to swim he, the tuna free. No. Well, hold on. Ah, 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 we'll get to Dean later. Okay. Next, Blake Peroni is out for the 2022 season. With He's getting knee surgery. He's not going to be at World Trials. So I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal balls long way. Is Blake Peroni going to make his third Olympic team for Paris? I'm swimming it. I just, I, I think he hasn't hit his peak yet. I just don't think he's peaked in this knee surgery. I, you know, knees are important, but for a freestyler, it's not like an existential problem. I don't think. So I think he'll make a relay team. <laughs> I'm totally thinking it. I, I, nothing personal against Blake. Okay. I wish you well. I hope you recover. Okay. But in 2021, he was number seven among Americans in the 200 free. I think he was fourth in the 100 free. So that was pre injury, like primo, you know, in shape dude. I don't think, I don't see it happening. I mean, there's too many up and comers that are going to totally overtake him unless for some reason he gets like Kyle, like Kyle Chalmers cyborg, you know, power. 100 free is super deep in the U S right now, but Blake Peroni like came up under Nathan. Like he knows how to have longevity in the sport. I do agree with Braden. I don't think he's peaked yet. I'm not saying that he wow. will, but I do not think he has reached his full potential. Wow. But I don't know if he will. Okay. I mean, he's, has he, he's only been 47, like once or twice. Mm, yeah. I mean, like dude, last year, he's like 40. The dude months. goes 129. <laughs> you know, it's like there. Yeah, but uh, he did a training at Indiana. He's still training in Indiana. What do you mean? No, but that's, that's what I mean. Like, I think he's going to come out of knee surgery. I think he's going to find a new ca- coaching situation that's going to be geared more towards 100 free. And I think it's going to be good for him. Oh, so right. that might be good for him, okay. but other people are okay. going to still surpass okay. him. So sorry, Braden, he's done. I'm sorry. <laughs> God, this is the best sink or swim <laughs> ever. Whoever wrote these questions is a genius. All right, next up. We saw a lot of exhibition swims at uh, last week's, this week's conference meets, and our commenters started getting a little rowdy about it. Uh, are you Are you okay with exhibition swims um at the conference meets especially ones that would get you to ncaa's you know i like i like prelims exhibition swims better than i like time trials i hate time trials and so if number one this is a way to cut back on time trials and last chance meets and blah 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 good number two i think for the big 10 especially it's a nice compromise 
to they they had some existential problems where they needed to shrink the size of rosters because they felt the bottom end teams needed a better opportunity to score points to so that they could show their athletics directors that they're making progress. And so I think this was like a nice compromise solution. If you're talking big 12s, it's kind of like, whatever, nobody cares about big 12s. I mean, people care about big 12s, but like, it's, you're not like disrupting the vibe of the big 12 championships with it. Um, in Pac 12s too, it's Pac 12s just has like such a casual seeming vibe. Maybe the, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the prelim swims are what gives it that casual se- or the exhibition swims are what makes it feel casual. But like, I don't think you're really disrupting the vibe there. Those meets are just not high excitement meets like the ACC and the SEC anyway. I don't see anything wrong with it. I kind of like the idea of you having like a, you know, throw it down, no, no loss kind of situation swim. I mean, why not? So I'm all for it, actually. <laughs> Seems nice. And, and I have to agree with Braden that uh, tracking down time trial results can sometimes be a nightmare. And I don't want to deal with it. I just want <laughs> there to be an X by someone's name in prelims instead. Right. Let's kill last chance meets, though. I think everybody is in favor of killing last chance meets. Really? Why? I just... Okay, I, what about I, the people who just made their cuts? They're not I in think, favor of that. I think it undermines the integrity of the conference meets. You know, like a, a team can can gamble. They can roll the dice on the half taper. And then if they're wrong, they get another chance. I, I That's not sports. Sports to me is showing up at the championship and swimming fast. Well, I mean, but these are like the the NCAAs are the championships. They just qualified for the championship. All right, then let's eliminate. Okay, fine. Let's keep last chance meets and eliminate conference championship meets. Then Coleman. Well, the, but the, like you, you have the date, right? Yeah, like exactly. you have the There's date. You can time. qualify yes. by, and then yes. like that's it. Ah. Exactly. They don't. They don't do that in any other sport. Basketball teams. Oh, sorry about that first it's round teams, conference loss. Teams. We need. Yeah, that's one more totally to different. Yeah, totally, totally different. different. Totally different. It is We're totally different. Individual. The last chance meets are, are the worst. I'm sorry. They are just the worst. I hate them. They're bad. Okay. They're bad. Commenters, the- please Sink. blast Braden. Blast Braden on this, please. I will die on this hill. I will. I, if, if this is my last chance to die so. on this hill, I you will, will die on it. You will sink on this hill. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got we got one more sink or swim. Uh, Dean Ferris, <laughs> he won a couple Ivy League titles this weekend. Didn't win Ivy Swimmer of the Meet. Uh, he got touched out by his teammate in the fifty. Um, but uh, you know, he looked okay. He looked kind of a little pedestrian for where we're used to seeing the dream. So I'm wondering if Dean the Dream Ferris will be in top form for his last NCAA championships in March. I'm sinking this and I, it hurts me to sink it. (laughs) This is, this is not based on absolutely no authority whatsoever. I've not like had a conversation with Dean. It feels to me like he had his moment. He was in Austin training. He put off his Harvard education to be in Austin and train for the trials the trials didn't go well. I think, I just think his moment has come and gone and he had one of the greatest collegiate swimming moments <laughs> that we've ever seen. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to think of how to describe like a moment, not one race, but like, a, you know, a period of time as a moment. Narratives. And, yeah. And, uh, and I just, I think that was it. And I think that that was peak Dean. I think he'll be good at NCAAs, but I think he's just going to, he's going to swim it out, get some top five finishes, retire, wait off into the sunset. Yeah. I do think like the persona that is Dean is even bigger than Dean, you know, himself. So I feel like his, his, he's already cemented that. And so this is kind of like, okay, we'll see what he does, but he's already in the annals of history. And especially with our commenters who will never let like his like deity die, you know? Why doesn't he start a YouTube channel? If I was Dean Ferris, I would have started a YouTube channel and I would be wealthy. Okay. And we'll start it. It would be him. called Dream <laughs> Ferris. Good one. His dream <laughs> sounds like Dean. <laughs> right. I can't take credit for that. That was definitely one of our commenters. 
but that was my favorite nickname of his by far. <laughs> uh, s- s- close second was the Deaner. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, well, Beans this rice. <laughs> well, this just makes me sad because I thought someone was going to have faith and they could restore my faith. Faith but in I'm the in, Lord and Savior, Dean <laughs> Ferris. But I'm in the same boat as you guys. I just I don't think like the year he went the year he went off in 2019 at NCs. You could see the progression from HYP to Ivies to NCs, and it just hasn't been that kind of progression for him this year. I usually want to be right, Sucks. and I really hope I'm wrong. <laughs> I really do. If 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 he just if he just pops a 4,200 back, that's all I want. Yeah. Way to end this <laughs> Is that so much to ask? <laughs> Way to end this podcast on a depressing note. Cole. God, swimming sucks. <laughs> uh, well, here's your chance to save it, Braden. <laughs> any, any last thoughts before we sign off today? Uh, Max McHugh coming back for a fifth year. I'm excited oh! about that. I am excited about Max McHugh coming back. That's a big one. You saved it, Brady. New, New South Wales championships coming up. We got Ariane Titmus. We got Mac Horton, a gazillion Australians. So. Will Dean Boxall be there? That's all I need to know. <laughs> I don't know. If Dean's there. I'm watching. <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. We glazed over this. We go, uh, Dream. S- Coleman, we're talking about Dream Boxall. <laughs> Dream Boxall. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good one for him. <laughs> uh, no. All right. Sink or swim. Uh, Max McHugh has two NCAAs left. It, assuming he uses his fifth year, will he break an NCAA record in that time? 100 breasts, 200 breasts, doesn't matter. One yes. NCAA record will swim. he break? Swim. Easy. Swim. Which one? Okay. I'm saying swim you one breath. have to pick one. <laughs> I'm saying <laughs> swim one breath. That's what I'm saying. You think yeah. he'll break an NCAA record? I think he'll break both. Oh, wow. I, think he'll break both. I think he'll break both. Wow. No That's way. You. you think he's going to go 147 8 in the tuner breast? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Apparently. That's insane. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we got a year to find out. <laughs> And that's our show. This is the Swim Swim Breakdown. Tune in every week for your week's news in swimming.